So the main talk in this uh, uh, special session is uh, uh, Andre's. Hi, Andre. Um, Andre uh, is a senior staff engineer at Qualcomm uh, in San Diego, and he serves as the rapporteur of uh, uh, SCF PAPI uh, Group, which has a long name. Um, and he's currently involved uh, in R&D activities uh, for this aggregated brand. And um, you know, we have been working, uh, talking together with uh, Andre and the team uh, about uh, how to uh, evolve the current implementation uh, that we have of PAPI in OAI, which Florian just mentioned, uh, is relatively old. And basically what we wanted to do through this uh, talk, through this session, is also to evangelize uh, you know, the need for um, um, an upgrade of uh, that uh, implementation is uh, in OAI, because here we are speaking about uh, reference uh, designs, right? So the idea is also uh, to um, PAPI being an important interface uh, to uh, advance on the, um, you know, uh, the the uh, the, um, the version of FAPI that we have uh, in OAI and align it with the latest, and uh, also um, uh, you know make it higher grade uh, for the purposes of uh, the uh, um, industrial uh, users who may use it. So over to you, Andre. Okay. You can use the okay. here. All right. Thank you, Irfan. Um, so uh, without too much ado, uh, so basically this uh, presentation kind of ties up together why there is a collaboration between the Smosa Forum and uh, OAI and uh, kind of brings in the open source uh, back into the talk. Uh, already Florian uh, gave a good introduction to that one. In fact, I kind of wish I could steal his slide. Um, so uh, we have uh, uh, this, uh, I mean, those of you familiar with those of you familiar with uh, a small cell form have probably uh, seen this slide uh, maybe three years ago. At that time, it was more of a kind of an aspirational slide um, where we would be, uh, we would, is this pointing to? That's fine, it's okay. So uh, where we would be uh, kind of uh, having FAPI part of all these uh, post-session architectures. Uh, so I'm, Happy to say that this, at this point, three years later, it's not just a nice slide that is aspirational, it is actual uh, achieved in, uh, in PAPI, uh, in the sense that uh, all these architectures, PAPI specific. Thank you. So, PAPI specific. Uh, so FAPI is specifically designed to target these architectures. It's not, it's not designed agnostically to this. It's designed in awareness of these architectures. So I'll go into a little bit more detail in the next few slides. Uh, but basically, the, the, the slide that Florian provided is a good intro. Uh, FAPI v2 was available uh, almost three years ago. And uh, at that time, like, it was a huge effort. And I want to acknowledge that uh, a lot of companies contributed to it. Uh, we took it from there. At that time, the, the goal was small cells. And uh, we kind of worked on it uh, year by year. Now we're at FAPI V7. And uh, with FAPI V7, uh, we address a lot of the uh, kind of the, the ecosystem that uh, need is needed in the market today, such as uh, like uh, all sizes of cells, uh, breadths of cells in terms of uh, performance. Uh, it has a very stable release 15 compatible baseline. It has a core release 16 functions supported, and uh, it has contributors from a, a, a diverse spectrum of vendors and operators. Uh, in addition, uh, and more specifically with regard to this conference, right, it's, it supports not just, uh, uh, I mean, clearly the standalone, which is the original goal of FAPI, uh, as well as the uh, the option six RU, but then it moved away and, uh, and now it also supports uh, uh, distributed RAN uh, architectures. And uh, even more relevant to this conference, it, is for, it supports a, a virtual RAN uh, with explicit support for virtual functions and appropriate configurations of all these virtual functions. And then uh, last 
but probably not, but certainly probably uh, most relevant. Uh, it is very uh, closely designed uh, to work with uh, uh, within an online ecosystem, uh, and in particular, it is it is designed to work uh, 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 with a layer one that interfaces with an open interface, open front hole, and uh, uh, there is a lot of configuration that goes on to make sure that the open front hole uh, is well aligned uh, with with the kind of the layer one configuration and the two work together in good harmony. So that kind of, uh, if, if you want more detail, obviously look at the specifications. Uh, you can uh, open the, the Swanson Forum site and uh, you will find a, a few specifications that I'll mention a little bit later on. Uh, it's maybe this will give you a little bit of a taste of uh, uh, what the uh, sort of progression has been over the years. The official FAPI right now is FAPI V7. Um, FAPI V8 is under development. Unfortunately, the, the NDA rules pro prohibit me from displaying what FAPI V8 is about. But if you happen to be attending uh, the, the Smosa Forum Planner, you can see that. Uh, it's definitely so uh, progressing. And this is an architecture of all the uh, interfaces relevant to FAPI. So uh, there are the basic five control interfaces, which are implemented uh, also in the OAI code base. Uh, those are mostly for uh, control uh, uh, of the file on a semi-static and then uh, slot-based basis. But in addition to this, there are additional FAP interfaces, uh, such as the network monitor mode, uh, the uh, control of the front end functionality, as well as uh, OAM for uh, specifically targeting the OAM front hole. So uh, the, the PCP 5P7, the one that Florian was uh, focusing on, uh, but also the AP4, P9, and P19. Um, so now, uh, this is where I really wish I could project Florian, star, uh, uh, which is a much better slide than this one. So in your mind, kind of project Florian slide, and then uh, I'll, I'll talk over, over that. Uh, effectively, so there has, there has been a lot of interaction between uh, uh, small software forum and OAI. Uh, in order to to move from specifications to actual um, uh, C uh, headers and eventual sort of support and implementation, uh, right now that effort specifically addresses P5, P7. As Florian mentioned, uh, Qualcomm is is, is uh, contributing uh, headers to accelerate that effort. Uh, eventually, the goal is going to be that uh, Small Cell Forum would maintain the FAPI specification and OAI would implement the stage three in C, and the two would stay in sync for the progression of a specification, uh, and then the collaboration would go both ways. I will have a few, a few more details on that later on. And uh, uh, once that's in place, then you can have uh, an ecosystem that kind of takes advantage of that. Uh, testing is uh, uh, one part of the ecosystem. It can go beyond that. Uh, again, I'll cover it in more. So, these are kind of uh, uh, two possible architectures that are enabled by the FAPI, uh, FAPI specification. On the left, you can see kind of the, 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 the basics tool uh, that uh, is enabled by, the, by three interfaces. So if you have five control between the higher layers and the layer one implementation, as well as front hole control, then you have an architecture that supports uh, a seven data split, an ODU, and uh, you can rely on, on FAPI to provide you uh, kind of the, the right hooks in, into that architecture. On the other hand, if you have a standalone architecture, you still need to have the file control and you need some way to control the front end, and that front, front end is going to be provided uh, via different data, sorry, a different interface. So in the first case for the ODU, the, 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 so that the front hole control is P9. In the second case for the uh, small cell, the front hole control is P19. And also you need some network monitor mode, so that's going to be provided by the P4. So these are kind of uh, reasonably self-contained architecture uh, that are enabled by FAPI. Uh, the ones that are highlighted in Cyan are the ones that are subject to the collaboration agreement between OAI and Small Cell Forum. So they're probably going to be the first one you'll see in the code base. Uh, the ones in yellow are not yet subject to the agreement. Uh, and I'm going to talk about uh, 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 kind of an easy way to get them in. So then going to uh, back to P9, right? We're talking about the 
this tool on the left here. Uh, how can we get kind of the, 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 a, a stable stool in a, a fully supported internal AI? So my proposal is that the next one should be P9. And the reason why P9 is a, a, a ripe target is that if you look at, uh, at the specification, you will see that it's basically, it's, it's code written in Word. Uh, it's, it's based on protobufs, uh, Google protobufs, and then uh, with the assistance of a bunch of young files to make the uh, OEM M plane interoperate in the Fabi ecosystem. So uh, you put the two together and you obtain 29, you, you take the two apart and then put them in the OIO code base, then you have an interface. So it sounds to me like uh, once we get P5, P7 in the picture, this should be the next target. So with this, let's assume that we have an OAI uh, implementation and it works very nicely with small cell form, we move from this, which is the current collaboration that, that occurs between small cell form and OAI, where uh, OAI has its own in, uh, interaction with an academic community and that to some extent also some commercial uh, 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 vendors uh, contributing to it and, uh, and having kind of a, a cycle on the top. And the small cell form separately today uh, talking to vendors on the bottom and some loose uh, 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 interaction between the two represented by the dot interfaces to move from this, which is already kind of a nice thing to have, to this, which is a lot better integrated, uh, where uh, you still maintain kind of the benefits of OAI in, uh, com uh, operating inside the academic community, but now uh, with kind of a, a well-defined interface that, that is relevant not just to uh, not just commercial deployment, but is also upstreamed to OAI, then it becomes possible to, to go both ways. So any new features that are contributed to the OAI code base to the extent to which they are relevant to, to, to a community of, of, of vendors in small cell forum, and by the way, academic community is also welcome in small cell forum, um, uh, then they can be upstream back to the specifications. And to the extent to which a new specification is, is, is updated, that specification can be moved to the OAI code base, part of this space that's in agreement. So then you have the two previously decoupled uh, interactions now being uh, more tightly coupled, and you can have a lot more fertile ground for operation, both on the academic grounds as well as, as, well as the industry grounds. That, that creates kind of a virtual cycle to, uh, you rely on a mature code base, you, you can kind of rely on it to create uh, new features, on the other hand, the new features that are contributed uh, become uh, easier to uh, integrate into commercial products because there's an already available interface is mature. It's it's agreed by the small cell forum, so therefore less friction between vendors. So that uh, allows an ecosystem to be built up. Uh, so with that ecosystem built up, you can have a rat, rapid spec adoption in in the OEI code base. Uh, it's most of them for uh, that for the OI code base, and then backward, right? You can have a lot of uh, features moving the other direction, and uh, then you can build the tools around it: testing, debugging, logging, uh, making sure that the interface is good quality. And then now with that, obviously, you can have a lot of collaboration. I, you, you guys are probably familiar with all these features that I listed here, so uh, uh, I'm gonna maybe open to uh, questions. Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, just maybe one one disclosure. Um, uh, I really love option six. I have been using option six you know, since 2011. Uh, I believe uh, it is the kind of the leanest, you know, one of the leanest uh, kind of front halls option that we have. If you use option six. Uh, I'm kind of wondering whether there is an opportunity to have option six as in another front hall specification within ORAN Alliance, given the fact that, you know, 7-2A has challenges with the FR2, and 7-2B has challenges with FR1 and massive MIME. Um, so, uh, I mean, clearly kind of the, the native uh, group for open six is Mossad Forum, it does not preclude for Oran to uh, consider that. And I think there was an original effort to, to move uh, option six into Oran. Uh, I don't know how far it progressed. Uh, I think ultimately the interest has to be driven by the industry. 
uh, the FR2 use case has recently been receiving a lot more attention in Oran, uh, especially in War Group 4. And uh, a lot of, uh, let's say, missing signaling was identified and corrected. Um, I, I know there's been some discussion about option six in Oran. Uh, again, various stumbling blocks, but I believe that if a community is interested, it doesn't really matter where exactly an option is implemented. What matters is that it exists and uh, reality is really created on the ground. Specifications cannot create reality. It is, it is what's commercially available, what the academic is interested, interested in, and maybe maybe kind of to take your question a bit further, uh, Oran has this ability of, 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 of developing openly, uh, especially since uh, two years ago. Uh, uh, at this point, the development in this process forum is not as open, but that's maybe something, a question of time, you can become more open and, and, and get more uh, actors in, um, and then maybe the different people that the groups won't be as significant in terms of uh, uh, collaboration. And I, again, I, I'm extrapolating here. Thank you. Yeah, if I may, I just want to also yeah. add on to Andre's comments. Uh, <clears throat> well, first of all, it's heartening to hear your uh, testament of the uh, ben, you know, advantages of split six, which we always believe that. Uh, <clears throat> but of course, you know, we do believe that there is a place for everything. So, so I think that's the idea. But uh, coming to the spec development, uh, <clears throat> you know, as Andre said, right? I mean, uh, <clears throat> you know, Small Cell Forum has the, you know, <clears throat> the, uh, uh, the the membership and the people who are stakeholders, let us say, in this. So, so um, what we, you know, decided is that we will continue this parallel development <clears throat> with a with a very good collaboration and communication between the two organizations. You know. Um, so, so, so the uh, uh, the plan or the thinking is that you know enhancements to uh, you know split six will, will continue to happen in the small cell forum, but uh, as I said, you know this uh, renewed uh, <coughs> collaboration between the two organizations will actually lead to uh, uh, as I said, you know alignment. You know number number one, making sure that the way the specs are written, the amount of detail that is there, you know we want it to be on par. You know. Uh, so that people can just say, okay, these are just uh, twins, you know. So, so, so that is the thing. Now, when it comes to new uh, features or so that uh, you know we would like to develop, that there again the collaboration, <clears throat> you know, where we uh, compare our roadmaps and make sure that there is alignment in functionality as well as timelines. So, so we feel that this uh, distributed approach to standards development is better than a centralized approach. <laughs> Um, I have a question if I may, Andre. Um, so you mentioned this uh, this P9 interface. That's a that's a new interface, right? That wasn't there before. Yes. Can you can you say a bit more about that? Because I didn't quite catch what the uh, what the P9. Um, okay. So doing exactly. Sure. Uh, you can see this architecture that I'm projecting here. I mean, it's very highly idealized and cleaned up. But uh, so uh, right now you have P5, P7, which provided a control between layer one and the upper layers, but you have to have some way of configuring the front hole. Also, oh, the P9 is that arrow there on the on the left that goes to the front. Hole. Oh, okay, I see. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's an important thing to have. That's a uh... yes, that's P9. But that's it's not released yet, is it? Is it? Yes, it is released. Oh, it's has been released. Version two. Released. Okay. All right. Thanks, Andre. You have another picture where all the interfaces are shown. Uh, one slide. Uh, uh, next one. Yeah, this one. It's also illustrated yeah, here, but in terms again. of control for control, right, I right, think that's right. Yeah, P P9 is right there in the center. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, just a probably a question for SCF and maybe work group six folks that are here. But my understanding is there's the acceleration abstraction layer, right? AAL work in WG6 in ORAN. Mm -hmm. Is it adopting the, the the FAPI as the baseline, or is is there Kind of still kind of conflict there. Um, um, so the, the uh, I mean a lot of uh, the development that happened in Oran around uh, the abstraction to dimension happened uh, independently of the small forum work. 
Um, I believe at this point the uh, the level of adoption is that uh, FAPI is referred to as an example implementation of uh, of the example stage three of the inline acceleration uh, stage two that is no, uh, documented in, in workgroup six. Um, the, I, I don't know exactly where things will progress. I know there's a lot of focus on stage three and work group six. So we'll see in the future where it goes. From the fact, from the small cell perspective, uh, the focus is on defining the interface and vendors that use it. And uh, again, the reality is creating the ground, it's not creating the specifications. Uh, that is driven a lot by vendors. Uh, it's not, if, it, if, if a feature is there, it's because a vendor wanted it or an operator wanted it. It's not there to, to support hypothetical. So, uh. Uh, one quick question on, uh, and then we can wrap this session. Uh, what does stage three uh, mean? Uh, could you please say something about that for the knowledge of? Yeah, thank you, sir. Actually, very good question. Because stage three exactly can mean different things. Uh, from the point of view of, of, of this uh, sort of audience, when we say stage two, we refer to actual uh, uh, code that uh, you can sort of use to interface with the driver, and that's what that's what we're looking for the OEI community to provide. In principle, there is kind of a, uh, in terms of kind of bits on the pipe, uh, OEI uh, uh, small cell phone actually does provide a stage three in that sense. Um, but then when vendors talk to each other, right, you need to implement those bits on the pipe, and there's a lot of friction. What did you mean when you said that uh, there's a padding here? Uh, in which order do these parameters come? Uh, having a same interface will just clear those in them. Just talk to all again. So, Andre, just on that, so could you look at uh, the OAI implementation as a stage three implementation? Uh, absolutely, that's where this is this collaboration will be heading. Thanks a lot, Andre. Thank you. Prabhakar, one final word? Um, yeah, actually, I have one. Can you bring my slide presentation again? I forgot to show this slide earlier. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much.